Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. Panda Bear here. Just wanted to give you a quick disclaimer. We do call ourselves three Ps in a podcast for episodes one through four. So we have changed the name to Bear Attack. We will explain that at a later date. And in the meantime, feel free to enjoy listening to us rant about nothing. Bear Attack! Parker. All right, welcome to uh, the Three Ps in a Podcast. I am Sam Oceans, also known as Panda Bear, and uh, we'll see how episode three goes. This is going to be the third one in like three hours, so <laughs> we, we'll Yeah, see. we're really pumping them out. We're going for volume. Yeah, let's hope the quality doesn't decline too horribly. Oh, if we can't get quality, we are going to get quantity. Yeah. We're, we're, we're on an upward uh, trend. For those of you who haven't listened to the last episode... There's a lot of filler. Well, not filler because we weren't trying to fill time, but there's a there's a lot of talking, but there's some good stuff in it. Yeah. Um, before we get too much into that, yeah. Um, we should probably introduce the rest of ourselves. Oh yeah, let's go. All two of us. Uh, I'm also Sam. They okay. call me Polar Bear, and uh, I was recently told that uh, my astral sign is Aries. I don't believe in it, but uh, I'm a Pisces. I believe that I swim like a fish, except at night. Nate knows that story. Oh no, but Do I mean I? I don't I don't believe in the astrology, but I like I like knowing little things like that. Oh yeah, no, it's a cool fact. I I am not sure that I don't believe in the astrology. I'm Nate, uh, recently dubbed Blitz, <laughs> Blitz. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm a Libra, and and I do I do kind of somewhat see why. Yeah, yours makes sense. Mine makes sense. I'm not real sure on yours. What's the What's the night swimming story? Oh, I yeah. almost drowned in a fountain at a shopping mall when I was like three, and the tiles in the fountain were black, so now I get freaked out anywhere near water at night or indoor pools. Oh, I, I forgot that story. I just remember you have a dark water phobia. Not that's the band name. He has a band name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much just came together. And it is a good band name. <laughs> my dude. Man, you guys, I'm... you guys don't know this because we've never, uh, well, practiced, but I am in a band called Peanut Squirt. Peanut and, squirt? Yes, it is it is a very, very near and dear to my heart. Sounds like a I, I I'm gonna you're probably gonna hit me. It sounds like a spoof band. I'm sorry. It is a it is an experimental. Um, I'm not going to put a genre on it because it's not experimental, um, and it is not very good. And so. Are you the sole member of Peanut Squirt? No, there are uh, no less than three of us. No, you... no less than two of us, wow. and no more than four. Two of the members were not so sure how how into the band they are. Oh, I didn't even know this. This is a, I, my mind is not. I had no idea he was actually doing things. That's all I'm going to say about it because uh, I don't want to. Uh, yeah, we create we, an expectation. <laughs> we we might we might have music someday. We might not. But uh, he's in that pre-stage where my band got. We recorded the band a music will, video and had some crappy audio, but other than that, it didn't go anywhere. The band will never break up because it's been a band for years now. Um, <laughs> it's just a question of if we'll if we'll if we'll ever make anything. Huh. Anyway, first topic today is another debate because you know I love to contradict other people excessively. Um, the guy who just the other day said I don't like conflict. <laughs> Contradicting and conflict are different things. That's true. Yeah. Sort of, not necessarily. There's a line. Okay, so a razor edge line. So give me the our line. generation had Scooby Doo, Flintstones, Jetsons, and cartoons like that. Okay. The new generation has absolute garbage. Gumball, Uncle Grandpa, you guys are gonna uh, disagree, I'm sure. Friendship Adventure is time. magic is pretty good. But I, I'm all for the old stuff. I don't understand the new stuff. It's like too psychedelic crap for me. It's like listening to Pink Floyd without like doing something i think you know i've spent a lot of time thinking about this um i don't know what happened to children's entertainment See, i don't understand like we went from quality stuff to stuff that makes no sense yeah i think that some of it's just like attention spans are short so they gotta like kind of be like all over the place you know what, i feel if like you, if you break it down and look at it like we're 90s kids like that's sure. when we're watching cartoons legitimate I'm a 90s kid but, like, all the cartoons that I grew up on were older. There wasn't, like, anything that came out in the 90s that I was into either. That's true. I was pretty into Except it. for VeggieTales. Yeah, VeggieTales. Yeah. VeggieTales got me through. VeggieTales is, like, 
you do not get Veggie Tales until you're an adult, though. It's not inappropriate in any way, but it's all adult humor. Right, like, yeah, for sure. but growing up, like, in my house, it was, like, Scooby-Doo, the original animated series. Like, Which Tom was, and Jerry. Adam Bavara. Quality. Yeah, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, like. Which I guess, I, I haven't watched any Tom and Jerry in a while, but, like, it seems like you can't talk about any days without people going, oh, yeah, it was racist, but they didn't know any better. I, what? I, I don't. I don't get I that. I guess that there's, there's, it's probably there's one episode with a black dude in it. Uh, I'm sure there is. That wasn't handled very well. Well, I mean, I can, I can tell you what it is if you want to really get into it. Sure. Oh, of course he knows. I mean, <laughs> so this podcast is going to reveal, I don't think it really come up much in my, with, well, as long as I've done these guys, but I got a lot of weird knowledge. He does. Uh, it's, oh, it's, we, it's we know massive, that about you. It's kind of scary. Oh, yeah. do you? Okay. I, I thought I'd, I'd hidden it well. No, um, you have not. <laughs> so, Tom and Jerry... One of the uh, sorry, there's a rumble strip. Um, <laughs> uh, I think one of the things they're talking that they talk about as being racist is um, a lot of the times the homeowner or the lady in the house they never show her like past her like knees, but um, she's a black lady or uh, lack of a better um, phrasing, um, and she's she's got a way she talks interesting i've never noticed this before yeah she's definitely got she doesn't have a lot of lines ever right because they don't i don't know either was they, they i'm guessing she's not in a lot of episodes at no all. she's not but um a lot of the times um she's in the episodes where you see a smaller variation of uh backdrops for the the characters to go at each other uh-huh uh, she's usually in those and then a lot of the times when there's like they show you a nice front yard and they've got uh, Spike the dog. Yes. Is a major character in a lot of Tom and Jerry episodes. But so Spike, when he's got a really nice dog house, and they show outside and they show inside, and the, there's a lot of variation of backdrops, the lady in that is usually a, uh, a white gal. Mm -hmm. Or a, a, a man with a sort of a New Yorker, Northerner style accent in a business suit. Okay. And I think that a lot of it comes from that. And then I think that there's some people that, like, go so far to make their points that they start uh, stereotyping uh, Tom and Jerry themselves into different little stereotypes. Right. And they start talking about it like that, which oh, I think is reaching. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear a reach about, since we since I brought up VeggieTales, I'll keep it short for our... I, I'm sure most of our audience doesn't know what VeggieTales is. But um, go ahead, there was a college... Um, somewhere, I forget where, I, I wasn't prepared to, like, put the facts forward with this, but they had, like, this whole thing on, uh, racism and children's cartoons and stuff, and one of the things that they talked about was VeggieTales, because Mr. Lunt and Mr. Nezer, Mr. Lunt has, like, a kind of, like, Hispanic accent. He's definitely Hispanic. And Mr. Nezer has what they said was a black accent. Really? And they're villains in, like, their first episodes, and so they're like, oh, yeah, they're, it's racist, but... So Phil Vischer, the creator, talked about this. And anyone who knows VeggieTales knows that they're not villains. The characters in VeggieTales are kind of like part of an acting... Uh, is it pronounced troop or trope? Troop. 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 Yeah, uh, that's what I thought, but every once in a while I'll, I'll have... They're, you know, they're part of I've had three monsters today. Troop 37. I've had three monsters today. But, uh... The, yeah, they're all part of the same the same acting troop. And, uh... They, uh, Mr. Mr. Lunt is a good guy in a lot of episodes, and Mr. Nezer kind of becomes a grandfather figure further on. And Phil Vischer does all the voices for the vegetables, so he needed some way to, like, make them different. So he just did it different accents. And Mr. Nezer is actually inspired by the Oogie Boogie Man from The Nightmare Before Christmas, who was played by a black actor. But if you're saying that's racist, you're saying that it was racist for them to cast a black actor, and I don't think anyone wants to do that. So I didn't know any of that. Actually. Before you start casting stones, maybe maybe fact check. But anyway, back to the main point: cartoons like that we grew up with, like the classic ones, like <laughs> back Tom to and the Jerry. Bigfoot, as we say. Back Sorry, to Bigfoot. <laughs> I, yeah, back to Bigfoot. I had I had to throw it in. <laughs> but like classic cartoons, like we grew up on, like Looney Tunes, Scooby Doo, Jetsons, Flintstones, stuff like that. That's what I'm going to show my kids when they're kids. Not this like I crap you. that comes out these days, like. As you should. I don't, like, they would have to explain it to me. Like, I don't know. If you didn't learn about life from a rabbit cross-dressing to fake out a hunter, 
in an <laughs> opera? Hey, yeah. You didn't uh, grow up right. Dude, oh. there is some straight up racist or, Looney or, Tunes. Or, or, or oh, talking dog 100%. that like hunts fake ghosts and stuff. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, For no, sure. it's it's quality entertainment. Um, if you don't know about the meddling kids, you don't know about life. Oh man, that was that Scooby Doo is still life, man. I'm like, I'm all about it. Do you guys remember Jimmy Neutron? Yes, that what, was also decent. Was that good? I can't remember. It's been that so was also long. another decent um, wave, like Fairly Odd Parents and that stuff. That was decent. I, I loved that stuff, but uh, well, I don't remember any of it. I uh, I as a kid was not allowed to actually watch a lot of those shows. I wasn't either. I wasn't allowed to watch SpongeBob. I was and, stuck uh, watching NASCAR most of the time. Yeah, I, right. I went back recently and watched some Spongebob and it was great and I enjoyed it but I also know why my mom didn't want me watching it because he is very obnoxious yes my parents hated Spongebob yeah that movie was great though because they were like oh my god Twisted Sisters involved oh my god <laughs> I just I just love the Ocean Man song at the end yes yes and it's a it's a pretty garbage song but it's great oh man Oh, this one hockey team made fun of like the last Super Bowl halftime show. They played that the Bubble Bowl song on their like Megatron in their arena. Yes. Oh my God! And it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, that came out. A, that came in a really big uh, request from the SpongeBob fans. I think. Yeah. At uh, the at the risk of sounding like a, a brony, Friendship is Magic has solid writing on it, and I know this because I have a very young sister. She, we're twelve years apart. And so when she was, you know, like five or six. Yeah, so you have more exposure to this stuff. Than right, I yeah. I've never watched it by myself. I don't I don't follow it. So therefore, I'm not a brony. So all you haters, just shut up. But uh, and not that there's anything wrong with being a brony if you are. It's kind of weird, dude. But uh, Do you, know. you. Do you, boo-boo. And in all honesty, the, the writing on Friendship is Magic is great. Like, there's conflict. There's character depth there's a uh, character development and uh yeah but then again great is relative because children's programming has gone so downhill including veggie tales veggie tales that's still happening is currently oh, yeah. on netflix being made by dreamworks i believe oh, and it weird. it is a garbage fire of a show but phil vischer's coming back on so who who knows it might get good again step up their act <laughs> but anyway, that, that, that's our debate for today. Like, old classics, that's what I'm going to deal with. Like, if you want to make good children's stuff, it's it's got to be, a, adults should be able to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, My mom was good. into Scooby-Doo because she grew up watching that when it originally aired, and then she gave it right. to me, and I intend on passing it down because well, when, it's when, amazing. When people pull the It's for Kids card, it's kind of like, well, you Scooby -Doo know. Scooby-Doo is depth, though. The whole, so is the whole point of being a, the oh. whole point of a, being for kids is to like help kids learn how to be adults for sure it should teach a lesson but also a shrek thing is a whole other debate though because that eh. like, shrek is shrek is juvenile shrek is, through and shrek through is, yeah but shrek is good it's it's classic the animation is really hard to watch these days though shrek is low. oh yeah now that we are like semi-pro at like film and stuff it's, yeah some of this stuff is like difficult shrek is love shrek is life is not too far off from the animation of the original shrek movie okay <laughs> we don't endorse well, that not, uh, we yeah. can't endorse that video but no, that's uh, horrible and now no words from the sponsors we don't have now back to the show <laughs> anyway we're gonna move on to the next topic because uh we're getting closer and closer to our destination um should that be me or should that be me uh, I forgot who's talking about what, but I, 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 I like having you be in the middle. We're starting a trend here. Oh, okay. So I guess uh, it doesn't have to stay, but <laughs> okay. But for now, I, I, I have one more legend. To talk about. Sure. Yes. Myth, legend, myth. I don't know. So uh, most people, if not everybody, knows the story of King Arthur. A lot of variations of it, but like King Arthur and the Round Table. Everybody, most people know about it. Knights of Camelot. Yeah. My favorite is the Transformers Five version. <laughs> he said sarcastically. <laughs> But, uh, so, King Arthur has a sword that he pulled from a stone um, that was gifted to him from the lady in the lake. Well, King Arthur has a knight, and I believe his knight's name is uh, Sir Valiant. Valiant. I want to say that's correct, but I don't actually know. Yeah, so Sir Valiant has a sword, of myth a, a sword that's also mythical. And uh, it's called the Singing Sword. That's its name. <laughs> Okay. The singing sword, um, and he gets it from his uh, rival in love. That uh, his rival in love. 
Is that like, uh, like so he's competition going after, for yeah, the... Yeah, he's going after a girl and another guy's going for the same oh, girl. Oh, you said that and I automatically went to Shakespeare. Yeah, well, so the... the it's very the other The other guy going for the girl is the owner of the sword. And then they go and they try... She gets kidnapped by Vikings. They go to save her. Together? Um, yes. Oh, don't you love it when two guys team up to get this girl and they know they're going to have to... Sam, you and I have been in that situation before. True facts. With um, another dude. There was three of us. Really? And we were all very good friends. And we, we continue to be. Well, I we never talked to the third guy, but if if we did, we would love him still. True. There's um, the, the only reason we don't talk to him is because we we don't see each other ever. Because we're punks. Yeah. But he's great. Um. Big anyway, fan. so this uh the singing sword, uh the original owner gives it to Sir Valiant. And Sir Valiant defends him while he goes to uh, onto a different part of the fight, very heroic and stuff. And right. then uh, at the end, they find out that the the princess they were trying to save is died in a shipwreck anyway. Oh my goodness. So anyways, uh, long story short, Valiant ends up with the singing sword. So the legend that I have moreover for that is that the singing sword is the sister sword to King Arthur's Excalibur. Oh. Were they like made together though? Well, so that's the, that's the thing is there's um, a lot of discussion about if Excalibur and King Arthur are real. And so far, the best thing that people can figure out and, like, the best evidence they can give is they surmise that the Lady in the Lake is the name of a meteor that crashed into a lake. Interesting. Oh, interesting. And so they're saying that the, the Lady of the Lake gave the sword to King Arthur and likewise to Sir Valiant because um, it had steel in it like a purer steel than we could make in on earth at the time <laughs> I'm gonna because make it. it came through the atmosphere wait was this not in the transformers movie kind of kind of is but um <laughs> i feel like there's no you know what that's in um and the aragon dragon rider books that's yeah. how they make the dragon rider swords yeah so that's this, the same thing um basically like the metal is pure because it got superheated through the atmosphere and then got hardened because it went through mm. um it got quenched in the lake so they, they get the steel, and they also make a, a statue of a lady in a lake out of the meteor after oh. they get steel for King Arthur's sword and the singing sword. And the reason they think that it's called the singing sword is because when steel hits iron, it, it, it uh, vibrates it, out a note. Oh. So it's not like it like sings a ballad. Like right. It's, it lets out p uh, different pitches. Which is exactly where my mind went in the yeah. first place. So the the topic I wanna I don't know if you guys wanna how you guys wanna discuss this but like do you think that holds water? Do you think that could be like some Quite Smith was like sure. I bet I could melt that down mix sword. Before we get to that, I wanna make a funny pun. So okay. it's basically alien weaponry. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so <laughs> so singing swords, metal or not metal? Metal, obviously. Metal ass. Depends on what noise it makes. That's true. No, it's still made of metal. No, it's, sound, it's, it could it could sound like it, it could sound like one Jackson, of the Teletubbies. Eh, noise, then no, no, it's, it's, it's still metal. It's definitely made of metal. Oh, um, <laughs> that oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Question. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Sorry, uh, I interrupted your laugh. <laughs> I feel bad for that. <laughs> now I'm laughing harder that you interrupted my laugh. Yeah, my get laugh. it out. Get it out. Oh god, I'm, I got it out. Um, yeah, well, is there a reason people think that? the legend of Arthur might be true um so the thing or is it just like there's like hey there's this story and it's like totally fiction but some scholar was like why don't we find any evidence of this if it actually happened so the idea that he's real is um people ask it because they they've found things that they think are right like they've, they've I think they found a castle one time that doesn't belong to anybody on an official record and they're like Maybe King, maybe this was Camelot. Interesting. But um, there's a lot of legends of like uh, kingdoms. So England, uh, so Great Britain, is made up of individual kingdoms. Sure. So like England is its own, was its own. Uh, Wales was its own. Scotland was its own. Ireland was its own. Yeah, Ireland was its own and still is trying to do that. Um, that's I'm not gonna get the politics of that here. No. Maybe later. Because that's that's more than sport for some people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, so Great Britain is made up of different originally countries. And uh, they got to be brought together at, at some point. Right. So King Arthur is the one that brought 
written together. Man, I feel like if that were true, it would be more documented. Well, because that's the that's the thing is Britain came together in the Dark Ages. Right. And the reason the Dark right. Ages are the Dark Ages is because nobody wrote anything down. It's the part of the uh, RTS that hasn't been uh, explored yet. Side note. I would be okay if we did like a whole Dark Ages sweep type of thing again and like the internet like got like, I don't know, the, like it changed because everybody's becoming zombies. Let's be real. <laughs> For sure. Donald but, Trump was never elected as the president. So the, <laughs> let's not get into that either. No. So the Dark the dark Ages, before the Dark Age happens, uh, there's no great, there's no Britain. It's all the different kingdoms. Right. right. And then the Dark Ages happen. Uh, and then when the Dark Ages ends, suddenly there's like their united country ish. 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 Because you know, that's, William Wallace had that's, in, that's so interesting. But um, to go back to Bigfoot. Back to um, Bigfoot. Yeah. Right. I, I'm not a physicist, so I don't know if you can actually like work like meteor steel. But man, if I were a smith and I found a meteor, I would definitely make a sword out of it. What's the name of Thor's hammer? Mjolnir. Mjolnir, Mjolnir yeah. Yeah, same concept except they're not gods. Kind of, but that, like, that's the idea of why King Arthur is the king. Right. It's because, you know, pro propaganda. They, Godly weapon. Propaganda, his legend says he pulled the sword from the stone. Right. And oh my God. And pulls the sword shall unite these great kingdoms. And this, right. the, there was nothing special about Excalibur. It wasn't even sharp. The singing sword didn't sing. They just told people it did, and everyone bought it and ran with it. Yeah, maybe, but the the thing they're thinking of that the like the pen is back, mightier, or that, but it might back up his claim. If it was steel and superior to all the other weapons, because sure. so iron is brittle. So iron, if you like, you try to stab something with it, right, it can potentially break if the thing resists it's good enough, right. But steel bends, right. right. So like, if he has a sword that can just bust everybody's iron iron age swords, four star alloy, he's going to <laughs> just like dominate so he's king right you can't beat him that's the guy that's in charge this whole story like oh i'm gonna get destroyed for this it's it's like a biblical type of deal um well, explain yeah give me, give me some, ah, give me some I, i'm gonna get killed for this but uh oh boy probably not maybe like okay so yeah i grew up a re religious and whatever but would you say you were gonna be crucified Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But, like, the Bible, okay? Sure. We we have a sort of kind of origin of the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. But Very there's... specific, but yes, go ahead. We're not... There's no author, right? There's multiple authors. There's many. It's so, a collection of books. The stories within could be, like, told from a certain person's perspective and then twisted into the, what is there, right? It, right. It's, it's not all, like, a solid concrete fact of anything, right? Uh, I mean, so yeah, all I of them, I would say, except the book of Luke. Right. The book of Luke is written by a doctor of history. Okay, so, yeah, other than that one, like, it could all be myth. Who knows? Right? Um, well, there's actually, this is a fascinating topic, and I feel like we would, to do it justice, um, I would need to first do a little bit of... Maybe we'll prepare and do a whole podcast. A, a little bit of preparation um, so that I'm not just talking out of my, uh, you know, cheeks. But, um... <laughs> yeah. But, uh, there's... Yeah, it's it's pretty fascinating. Um, just to, like, go over it quickly, like, archaeologists keep finding, like, cities where previously it's like, oh, that's not real. The only reason we think that there's a Jericho is because of the Bible. But recently, like, within the last few years, they found a sunken city. Oh, yeah, they that found was, Jericho. Atlantis. They found Jericho. Yeah, they, yeah. Found, they found Jericho in the desert. But how do you um, know that Jericho's not Atlantis? It could be Atlantis, but who's to say Jericho and Atlantis aren't one and the same? Holy True. crap. That's different. El Dorado. It's, oh so, my God. it's totally different, yeah. I'm sure that the legends don't place El the cities Dorado anywhere near each other. Okay. They told me that in the movie once. <laughs> yeah, because we But yeah, really the, the documentation of the Bible, and there's a lot of people that talk about like the contradictions in the Bible. Most of the time, they don't actually understand the context or the like genre that the original language was written in, and they're not actually contradictions. Um, so cultural context is really important. Um, what was I on about? Oh yeah, the the documentation of the Bible is the Bible is much more solid than like the Iliad and the Odyssey. There's way more copies. They're all very close to each other. Um, For just sure. just incredible stuff like that. Um, um, and I, we would need to prepare to actually. Yeah, talk I don't about want to it. delve into it way too deep. But also, um, something for anybody that's really curious about this, to look up a place to start. And I mentioned the book of Luke. 
the book of Luke is in the uh, the first couple books of the New Testament. Luke was not a, a Hebrew man. He's not a Jewish guy. Interesting. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's from... He's a Greek doctor of history. And I, um, he heard about the... He heard about Jesus, the legend, and um, years later, he wanted to go and... Uh, I'm sure they got caught on the mic. He wanted to get the real story. So he went through and talked to people that were there, talked to his primary sources, and created the book of Luke based on their accounts. Mm. Huh. And this is stuff that you don't, you will never know just reading the Bible. Like the, if you just, and I, you know, I've been reading the Bible for years and I've always kind of hated the book. But once you kind of start delving into like the context and like stuff like that about it, it totally changes everything. Yeah, like, like you can't the bible can't be like your only source for the bible i think because uh you'll you'll miss a lot of just how amazing of a book it really is and there's a lot of stuff in it that like we we read wrong in our western you know mindsets like there's a lot of stuff in the bible that's actually not supposed to be taken literally um True. yeah that's that's um, all I'm gonna say. I don't feel as horrible about bringing that up as I thought it was going to, but anyway, we'll move on from that. No, that's that that is a, I think that is a great question that that it, we should talk about yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, honestly, we can do as it a culture honestly, for sure. Maybe that'll be like our season finale. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I we think, always get to religion like in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> I I keep doing it to us. I know. I, I did that, that. I did it that time. He did it that time. Oh uh, well, I mean, I opened the doors. Usually, but, uh, I, I, I'm to blame at least once. I, I, I'm, I'm not mad about it. Hey, dog, where's this in and out at? Oh, yo, it's on. Uh, <laughs> shout out, Indian School and not a sponsor. Uh, the 101. Oh, we're not there yet. No, so you're just like hop over a couple lanes though. It's coming up. Yeah. Uh, um. Nate, all right. Topic, My can topic. We, can we cover it quick or no? Yeah, yeah, we can cover it as long or quick as we want to. Uh, topic, waking up uh, your mom for something in the middle of the night. Horrifying and uh, terrifying experience every single time. <laughs> I, I see that, yeah. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yep. So, my favorite... Um, no, because my mom's never awake, uh, never asleep in the middle of the night. That's true. Oh. Uh, Morning, well, however, that's horrifying. <laughs> this, one go, if we're, this topic. No, my favorite comedian, Tim Hawkins, had a bit on it, and it was so funny. He, like... It was like this one here. Well, if this topic goes long, we can go up to Bell. His, he's a like uh, what's her? Oh, they're, the lot, they're talking about yes. In and Out. I'm gonna just. How are you, listener? I hope Sorry. that I hope that you're well. No, uh, In and Out's important. Yeah, no, just. No, no, thanks for not, thanks not for taking the time to listen to this. I hope that you're you're having a good time and. Thanks for that. You know. That you're you're doing well and that this is some in some way entertaining to you. Maybe just keeping you up on a late night drive. You ran out of things to listen to, or your other podcasts haven't uploaded anything in a while. Don't you hate that? Or when they just stop all together and they never said that they were going to take a break or anything? It just oh happened. God. I've definitely done that a few times. So, yeah. <laughs> Is he ranting about how he got off topic and we're like being loud on our He's, he's being entertaining while we're No, you about. just bring up my levels for this part and it will be great. All right, I, uh, so let's, uh, I got intimate there for a second. Let's talk turkey, Nate. What, what's your what's going on? No, so like Tim Hawkins was talking about um, like waking his mom up in the middle of the night, and like he's like he does this thing where she's like, I don't know. Somehow I feel like he just became larger than life all of a sudden. And was like, Bruh! Buddy, like, is that right? you? <laughs> Are you okay? And you're just like, as a kid, you're like peeing your pants, and like, <laughs> he's like, what's her sleep number? Six six six. And he's like, he's like doing this thing he does with his leg where he's like, I got poop going down my leg. Oh, it's in my sock now. I think, I think I'll make it to the bathroom. <laughs> and it, I was laughing so hard. I thought I was actually going to asphyxiate and die in the like venue. <laughs> that, that joke reminds me, I don't know if you guys ever played, there was this game. It's kind of like Operation, but it was called Don't Wake Daddy. And it's got this like figurine oh my gosh. in a bed and like you have like you have to avoid certain things or he like pops up and starts talking to you oh, I think oh that's that. so scary <laughs> it is yeah. absolutely freaking horrifying Where i am I, going? I always no, tried to avoid a... waking up my dad because i don't know why i just feel like it would have been scarier your dad's a 
terrifying individual. My dad's so quiet and gentle, and for some reason that That's really the part that freaks people. Me. The quiet ones are the dangerous ones. Yeah, people, it freaks people out, but he is like the kindest soul. <laughs> yeah, uh, your your dad's awesome. Oh, see, I yeah. see it. Um, so, but I mean, I think the scariest thing about waking up your parent is like the like non recognition of like being a human entity. You first wake them up. They're like, mm. "Who am I? Oh, I've been what to this year is it?" Yeah, no, it's true. Because parents are exhausted from all taking all your crap all day. Yeah. And so when they wake up, they're not really coherent. Sort of in context of this, apparently when I was a kid, I used to, uh, I used to sleepwalk a little bit, oh, and awesome. I do talk in my sleep. Did you sing? No, no. I would go to the fridge and talk into the fridge, <laughs> which is ironic. That produce was that produce felt very yeah, important can, and special. Right He's talking to us. I have a story for you guys. Tell me about it. I, have, I also have a story based on sleep and stuff. Um, so one time I woke my parents up. And they were like, what's wrong, honey? I'm like, I have to throw up. And my mom goes, go go throw up. And I went, Bleh! right on her. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, she she didn't mean for me to throw up on cue. I, I doubt it. I doubt she did. Um, so here's my fun sleep story. Okay. So... Um, I have in, insomnia-esque uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know. I don't sleep. I can sleep. I can only sleep for about two to three hours on a mark uh, at a time. He calls it. He he likes to brand himself as one of the sleepless elite. Yeah, it's I, I do, but also I like to um, talk and say that I'm 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 not. A, I don't sleep. I'm just an aggressive napper. Is that going to drive your future wife crazy? Probably. It scares her right now, because... But then again, having to share a bed with someone is... I just don't love. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I married an... Maybe if I married an insomniac, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, I, I don't get up. I just, like... I just... My eyes open, and then I shut them and try to go back to sleep. But sometimes I don't shut them, and I just look around. Mm -hmm. And that freaks Amy out a lot, I think. Interesting. But, um, that would be horrifying. Yeah, but anyway, so I also used to sleepwalk. And, like, when I was a kid and sleep, and I would sleep. Um... And I also drum in my sleep. Uh, oh, so you can excellent. beat the crap out of your fiance. So I went, <laughs> um, we were we were camping up up in northern Arizona, and I was uh, sleeping in my family's trailer with them. Um, I was on the couch. My brother was on the table that folded down, and my parents were in their bed. And uh, my mom remembers very vividly being woken up by somebody tapping on the walls. Oh my god! And she looked over, and I was like rocking out to a beat just passed out <laughs> but i was like on beat playing away as she was just like the next morning i she... can imagine it i can see a little sam just oh no not little sam i was a teenager oh Lord. i can see two days sam it's... i was like okay it's less time. funny now uh but uh little sam uh sleep, slept walk is creepy um <laughs> I, i'm a talker so i talked to my oh yeah walk, I, we walk, would yeah. have full-blown conversations and i wouldn't remember them the next morning yeah mm -hmm. but my mom woke uh, I when i woke like up and for breakfast the next morning my mom was like hey what were you playing last night and i was like dead playing dead i don't know what was I supposed <laughs> to be? and uh, so yeah i'm a i'm a sleep rhythmist interesting nice well we are at in and out so we're gonna cut this this is gonna be a short and sweet one um lots of lots Lots of less rambling in this one. Yeah, so, seriously. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this has been fun. Thank you guys for listening. If there's stars to leave, um, we don't know what this is going up on yet. This is all very green and raw. So if you like your podcasts green and raw. Oh, dude, did somebody just rip one? Yeah, I did. Oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of green and raw. <laughs> we, we fart on this podcast. This is why we call it. you Blitzkrieg. This is why. Can you Any wrap you. the show so we can get out? <laughs> Oh yeah, just uh, just go ahead and open the door. Oh. Anyway, if there's stars to leave, leave them. Uh, thanks for spending some time with us, you guys. I'm Nate, and we got oceans and polar bear, and uh, yeah, that's the show. Thanks. I'm not horrible disappointed. Bye. Bye.